All right, here we go. This is Steve Dodge, Assistant City Engineer. You have uh, visited the uh, video for the 2022 Pavement Management Program, the Carlita Way Area Improvements Project, that's City Project 2016-09F. Uh, with me tonight is Luke Morn of Kimley Horn. He's the project manager. Uh, the, gen the agenda for tonight is we are going to go over the Carlita Way project. Uh, we're going to look at the proposed improvements. Uh, there's uh, some potential parking uh, restrictions and the 63rd court east uh, modifications. Uh, other than that, we'll be re you know, looking at the street and stormwater improvements and utility improvements and we'll discuss assessments and then schedule the for those uh, that are attending uh, right currently uh, zero have signed up uh, or have come to the meeting uh, but uh, if someone does join uh, these would be the instructions to uh, be able to do a question and answer session uh, in the end uh, where you can ask a question by clicking on the lower right corner of your window on ask a question. And then you can type it in and we'll answer any questions you may have. The general project overview is the street segments. The project is just north of 65th Street on Cahill Avenue, just off of Cahill Avenue and it's Carlita Way uh, is a looped road off of Cahill with a small section of 63rd Court and 64th Court that are part of the project. Generally, the uh, other scope uh, of the project is this is gonna be a full reconstruction, uh, replacing the street into its existing width uh, full reconstruction means we're going to uh, go down uh, with new pavement, gravel, and a sand section in order to uh, build a, a road that lasts uh, long term. And the also uh, we're looking at a water main replacement project, and along with that, the sanitary sewer would be replaced, and there's uh, storm sewer improvements uh, that are also proposed and it would impact the uh, front yards along the curb line and the driveways. Uh, the general proposed street improvements would be to install a concrete curb, which would be a, a barrier, a B style curb, which goes straight up. Uh, similar to the bituminous curbing that's there today, but it would be concrete with a uh, gutter section. And uh, we at the bottom of the two foot sand section I described, we would, we would also place drain tile in order to have a free draining road. Uh, and we had mentioned that there would be uh, in the boulevard, there would be behind the curb, there would be front yard restoration with seating. And we'd have to uh, do driveway apron reconstruction, and we would match driveways. Uh, and if there's a concrete driveway, we would go far enough back to match into a uh, joint or reasonable location. Uh, there's no existing street lights within the neighborhood, and uh, that would take a local petition if the neighbors uh, and residents in this neighborhood felt they would like to add street lighting that comes with additional uh, upfront costs uh, and utility costs on the utility bill, which until that's requested, uh, we can go over that at that time. Uh, we did meet with public safety and had an internal staff review of uh, Carlito Way. Uh, we just want to note that there is a potential 
for uh, no parking on Carlito Way. Uh, and uh, the parking location uh, is be just being considered to provide safe emergency vehicle access in and out of the neighborhood due to the uh, sharp corners uh, and, and the north and south entrances off of Cahill. And uh, these are just potential parking restrictions which are under consideration. Uh, we're looking for uh, resident feedback uh, to bring back to council at a future date uh, and council would be the ultimate uh, decision maker based on uh, staff and resident feedback. 63rd court uh, modifications. Uh, this is an existing dead end street, uh, but there, uh, other than property 3120 there, uh, no, there's no other driveways or reason for access to 63rd court. So we would propose, we are proposing to do a modified uh, bulb style cul-de-sac that just kind of jots out. Uh, it's, it uh, helps out with maintenance for snow plowing uh, and still provides access to the lots to the north uh, of this that may need it for uh, whenever, if they ever get built on those empty lots that this, that are all city owned lots. Um, there is a proposed sidewalk connection to Prairie State's housing development. Uh, they are doing improvements to their site uh, within the next year. And those improvements include internal uh, sidewalk connection. Uh, we're just proposing to continue that based on uh, coordination efforts with them. The general stormwater improvements proposed the replacement of existing uh, storm sewer catchments and pipe. Uh, the proposed storm sewer uh, is in purple and would start on the north end of Carlito Way and come all the way down to 64th Court and to a um, pond which is uh, would be built as part of the Cahill trunk drainage improvements and that uh, that is being worked out with the three property owners uh, well three properties uh, just south of Carlita uh, where that blue pond is showing in the bottom of the screen here and uh, that is proposed to be a dry pond uh, just so we're clear on that uh, that would drain away uh, and be dry in between rainfall events. And it, the idea of proposing it is to help out with 64th Court uh, because 64th Court sees uh, flood, has flooding issues and larger rainfall events and it's been observed by the residents. Um, we're also, we'll look at as part of the street and storm sewer improvements, uh, and coming off of the north entrance off of Cahill, if you can see my hand, uh, lot 6175 kind of has a backfall driveway that we would look at um, proposed storm and street and curb improvements that uh, collect and keep the water, storm water uh, from going down the driveway and impacting backyards. Uh, and then on 6285, uh, that would be right in the middle of the project on the inside of the loop where my hand is, uh, there's a storm stub we're proposing to put out because there is uh, comments related to backyard drainage issues and we want to provide a um, private solution to connect to the storm sewer if someone so chooses. Uh, so there will be a storm stub provided if if a, uh, someone wanted to connect to that storm stub. The utility improvements, uh, we're proposing both new sewer and new water, and that's based on the water main is cast iron and has shown 
past history of breaks and uh, so at that point uh, we need we were proposing improving the uh, the uh, water main and along with that the existing sanitary sewer is clay uh, and it's shallow so we propose to uh, improve replace both of those at the same time uh, in order to do that we have to also replace sewer and water services. Uh, it's the water service, uh, the sewer service, you want to just make sure we get it behind the curb uh, so it's accessible to the resident for their private service. Um, but the um, for the water main, we, we usually we want to put the curb stop to the right away, which is shown on here in this dashed line. And then you can see these little blue squares, which would be potential easements. And if you look real, real closer at the easement acquisition, uh, these would just be a permanent DNU drainage and utility easement for the purpose of putting in the curb stops. And uh, and then they would we would have to work that out the next year with all the property owners. So we have a um, easement acquisition built into the timeline of the project to work with every individual property owner uh, in the next year. The general project funding and cost uh, is you can see that between the roadway improvements uh, over a million dollars and storm improvements of 286,000 and water main improvements of around 500,000 and sanitary sewer of 381. It brings around a total project cost of over 2.2 million. Now, just to be clear, the uh, the assessment portion is only on the road and st local storm improvements, not including that pond I had mentioned, which is a separate project. And uh, this is only the street storm improvements and the roadway improvements. Uh, looking at 338,000, uh, of assessments, and then one million dollars uh, for the PMP for funding, that's a pavement management program, city funding source. The water would be totally funded by the water fund and the sewer uh, improvement sanitary sewer would be totally uh, funded by the sanitary sewer fund um, at a total project cost of just over 2.2 million. Uh, the general assessment policy for the street and storm reconstruction is uh, for 35% of the project cost. But uh, you'll see on the next slide that there's a proposed cap. So the actual effective uh, assessment percentage goes down uh, to 25%. And that, that's uh, gonna be reflective uh, when looking at the preliminary uh, assessment policy amount per calculation is $16,530 um, for single family lots, but we hire an independent appraiser to review what special benefit can be attributed to the, to the residential lots and the special benefit provided by the independent appraiser is $9,600. So if we don't use the $16,000 assessment uh, per policy amount. We use the lower of the two in this case, which is the $9,600 proposed assessment cap and special benefit provided. Uh, so the assessment amount was, is based on that and it would be a, a 10 year term. Uh, it wouldn't in this case, if it's a 20, 2022 project for next year, the uh, assessments wouldn't start until January uh, of 2023, and you would have the option to pay them off in 2022 uh, after the assessment hearing is held. You have 30 days to pay it off at the city in full, the full $9,600. And that uh, the assessment would include interest if uh, you let that lapse over into your um, uh, the 10 year term, which is paid on your annual 
uh, property statement taxes uh, every six months. The project schedule is we're going to uh, we're hosting the virtual meeting uh, information meeting tonight uh, prior to the improvement hearing. Uh, April 12th is when uh, we will present to council at the improvement hearing and we of course welcome uh, any any resident uh, and property owner to uh, join that meeting and there are instructions in the letter you that was provided to you for the notice of how you may join that join the city council improvement hearing and provide comment for or against uh, the project or any comments that you feel are necessary for the project. The uh, go through final design and easement acquisition and working with the neighborhood for the these public improvements. Uh, we look to bid the project in you know March April of 2022 and then authorize uh, Council would have to authorize, receive the bids and authorize uh, construction uh, and hold an assessment hearing uh, after the project is built uh, in spring of 2022. So May, basically April, May through fall of 2022 is uh, the bidding and construction and assessment hearing process. And at this time, we would normally open it for questions, uh, but uh, it looks like we have one attendee uh, potentially that may have joined. Uh, Luke, could you uh, let us know if they're available or have questions? Yep. So, um, good evening. Uh, my name is Luke Morin. I'm with Kimley Horn and Associates um, with the consulting firm um, hired by the city doing the engineering on this project. Um, looks like we did get. Um, one question that's come in so far, which I did publish. So um, it's from Ryan at 6201 Carlita Way asking, um, would the easements require trees to be removed? Um, so the, you know, specific to the 6201 property, I guess I, I don't have the information in front of me to to answer that question directly. Um, you know, it's going to be what gets impacted um, as a part of replacing the curb stop boxes that Steve mentioned when we were when he was discussing the water main improvements. It will be solely dependent on where that curb stop box is located specifically in relation to your property. And then, you know, if, if there's a tree so for example, Steve, actually the, the slide that Steve just pulled up has the view of 6201. Um, so Ryan, so your residence, um, you know, I, I don't, without having the survey data in front of me, I don't know specifically if that will cause or the construction and replacement of that curb stop box is gonna impact any trees. I guess what I would say is once the project's ordered and um, we start the process of reaching out to each of the property owners individually, we'll have that information and be able to talk that through with you. Um, and and we would we would discuss that at that time and let you know what once we have construction limits and those impacts identified, we'll, we'll then follow up with answers to those kinds of questions. And I would uh, also add that in the, the typical <clears throat> easement acquisition, we're only talking to going 10 feet past what is the property line and in a swath that's 20 feet wide. So these purple rectangular squares, just regular ones you see here are basically 10 feet deep by 20 feet wide. You can see on your property 6201, it's a great example, we have trees uh, up close to this. So um, there's a potential uh, so for some tree loss, but that's gonna be details we'll work out uh, in the agreement because um, we're on your property. Uh, the city uh, would propose, or I would propose uh, we pay uh, for tree removal uh, and um, we have a typical number that we use uh, that when we get into property negotiations and e for easement acquisition that we use uh, on a per tree basis on working with residents. So um, we can 
we'll definitely work with you on those details. Um, and we won't know for sure until we get into preliminary uh, design and get far enough along in the process where we um, uh, know the fine details of what, what the disturbance area and, and what's being disturbed. Thanks for the question, Ryan. Are there any others? I don't see that anything else is coming, Steve. OK. Well, we would like to uh, thank you uh, for participating. And uh, for those that are going to view this on the web, uh, it will be placed on the Carlita Way uh, project web page uh, for viewing uh, we, in the improvement hearing uh, is on April 12th, uh, and you can do both virtual or you can do call in uh, as an option, uh, which is noticed in your um, uh, provided in the public notice uh, that was mailed to you, uh, or you can also uh, attend in person uh, at the council meeting. Uh, just got to follow CDC guidelines for COVID 19. So, and then feel free to reach out to Luke or I uh, in our inf project information in the letters provided uh, if you have further questions. Thanks, Luke, uh, for setting this up, and uh, we appreciate uh, you know attendees uh, with us tonight from the Carlito Way area. Have a good have a good evening.